Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and dear students welcome back to lecture number 21 of macroeconomic course pehle ki tarah chand minute ke liye hum pichle lecture pe baat karenge and try to revise what we have learned in the previous class and then we move forward for today's lecture so pichle lecture pe humne baat ki thi we talked about the business cycle uh and in that context we have discussed two important theories of business cycle in macroeconomics uh first theory that we talked about uh under business cycle uh was the real business cycle theory uh and then the second we have discussed the new keynesian's economics theory about business cycles uh first i recap about the real business cycle theory so in real business cycle theory we assume that uh, perfect flexibility of prices and wages so when prices and wages are perfect flexible so that keeps all market clear right all the time uh, again and it also shows that how fluctuation arises in response to productivity shock aur humne under real business cycle theory we have also discussed that how productivity shocks are the cause of economic fluctuation in an economy uh, jisme humne dekha and we have seen and we have compared the changes in the level of output and uh, with the residual uh, residual uh, uh, solo residual uh, which we consider as a technology so whenever there is shock in technology or spread shock in productivity this will bring a shock or change in the output right so we concluded that the fluctuation uh, in econo uh, economic fluctuation in the economy are optimal response Uh, of the shocks in the economy or the productivity shocks in the economy so whenever there are productivity shocks uh, whether in terms of aggregate demand aggregate supply or any other productivity shock like in form of technology employment this will bring economic fluctuation so according to real business cycle theory jo humne seekha and uh, we have learned that according to this theory productivity shock are the main causes of economic fluctuation in a country or in an economy uske baad humne kuch point of controversy discuss kiye the point which are controversial uh, between uh, real business cycle theory and the economist uh, first was the intertemporal substitution of labor so uh, labor can be intertemporal uh, substituted uh, and that case uh, <clears throat> uh, supply will be adjusted accordingly to cover or to recover from the output gap or from the output or productivity shocks similarly technology uh, we have also seen that according to real business cycle theory technology is the cause of uh, 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 economic fluctuations so whenever there are technology shocks of course uh, there are there will be economic fluctuations so uske baad humne baat ki in in rbs rbs rbc theory we talked about the neutrality of money but there are critics there are arguments against that who says that money is not neutral even in the short run right right so whenever there are economic fluctuations money start working and then economy come back to its equilibrium and then we talked about as uh, in rbc is other point of controversial between the rbc theory and the other group of economist according to rbc theory we have learned that prices and wages are flexible according to that flexibility of prices and wages um, markets are in equilibrium but the critic says that uh, the other group of economists says that prices and wages are not flexible even in the short run and in the long run right so prices are sticky and we have discussed and uh, the stickiness of prices there are many reasons of stickiness of prices and uh, because of those reason we concluded that uh, the critic says that the prices are uh, 
uh, sticky in the short run. The second thing that we have discussed in this business cycle theories, it is the new Keynesian economics. Uh, new Keynesian economist accepts the traditional model of, uh, model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply and they attempt to explain the stickiness of prices and wages with microeconomic analysis including menu cost, coordination failures, staggering of wages and prices. So they say that, new Keynesian economists say that prices are sticky, prices are constant uh, in the short run and they believe on the traditional theory of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So according to this group of economists, they say that uh, whenever there are economic fluctuations, whenever there are disturbances in the economies, we can recover those or th that can be uh, that can be taken care of with the help of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Now we'll come to today's uh, lecture. So we are going to start a new topics under macroeconomics. Uh, which is the consumption. Consumption, yes, I can more, more, uh, when we talk about consumption, so foreign uh, Hamarazin Miyatak, this is the concept, this is the scope of microeconomics. But uh, if we look as far as macroeconomics is concerned, consumption also play a very important vital role in the determination of other economic parameters. Just like we have studied in we have a national income identity and where we have seen that y is equal to c plus i plus i g plus n x so consumption is a part of basically a, the national income identity and it play a very significant and important role uh, in, 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 in macroeconomics so we need to study consumptions also in, in, in macroeconomics not only in microeconomics. So what we are going to study in today's class, what we are going to learn in today's class, we are going to discuss two group of economists. One is John Maynard Keynes, and who has given consumption function, and he determined the relationship between consumption and current income. So we'll discuss his theory, his point of view about consumption and income, about the relationship between consumption and income. So, first of all, first part of the lecture, we will talk about Keynes' ke consumption function, hai, where he talked about the relationship between income and consumption. Second part of the lecture is about the Irving Fisher. Irving Fisher is an economist, and he also talked about uh, uh, the relationship between consumption and income, but he introduced a concept of intertemporal choice, that, cons uh, that produce consumer has a choice, or the cons uh, or, uh, individual has a choice to to consume or to spend his income at present and, and uh, or save some income and, and do spending in future uh, so he or she has an intemporal choice between present and future consumption so these are the two school of thought two group of economy uh, two group economists jin ki hum baat karenge aaj or we'll see that how they see consumption and how they relate consumption with income uh, and then we'll end up with the in the recap of this lecture. So what we have learned in today's class, so we'll start from the first part of lecture, which is about the Keynes consumption function. How Keynes see or observe the relationship between income and consumption. Now, before going to Keynes consumption functions, so there are some Keynes conjectures. So first we see those conjectures, uh, assumptions. According to Keynes psychological law of consumption, uh, Keynes said that uh, MPC, which is the marginal propensity to consume. Now what is MPC basically? MPC basically is the change in income due to change in consumption. Now, uh, MPC is the change in consumption due to change in income. What, whenever there is a change in income, consumption will also change. But um, with this equation, we say that the MPC, the marginal propensity to consume, is always less than 1. What it means that whenever there is increase or change in income, consumption will also change, but by less proportions. Right, so that's why we say that MPC is less than one. Greater than zero means it is always positive. 
second conjecture in Keynes, according to Keynes, is that APC falls, uh, average propensity to consume comes down because APC is equal to C over Y, consumption over income, right? When we say that uh, APC falls, uh, in, according to Keynes, that as income goes up, consumption goes down. The consumption will also go up, but by less portions, right? So because of that property, we can say that uh, as income goes up, consumption also goes up, but AP, the average propensity to consume, goes down or falls as income rises. The third uh, conjecture in case of Keynes uh, economist is that income is the main determinant of consumption. So according to Keynes, uh, John Keynes, uh, the income is the major determinant of consumption. So there are three basically conjectures in Keynes model uh, consumption function. One that MPC lies between 0 and 1. Second, uh, AP fall as income rises. Third is that income is the main determinant of consumption. Now we draw the Keynes consumption function according to Keynes. Uh, consumption function can be written as C is equal to C bar plus C y. Now C bar is a constant or uh, intercept. C is the small, uh, C is the marginal propensity to consume. Uh, and that tells us the change in consumption due to change in income. Now, uh, we can draw this Keynes consumption function. Uh, on y-axis, we are measuring consumption. On x-axis, we are taking income. Now, we, you see that uh, we have started consumption function from uh, different from zero. Why? Because whenever there is no income, there is some consumptions, right? So, uh, but if you see that, that income line is going up, is positively sloped. What this tells us, what this shows, that this tells us that there is a positive or uh, direct relationship between consumption and income. When income goes up, consumption will also go up, right? So, but of course, according to Keynes, the change in consumption will be less than the change in income. And this is what we call Keynes psychological law of consumption because जब इनकम में इजाफा होता है सारी का सारी इनकम खर्च नहीं की जाती उसका कुछ प्रोपोर्शन कुछ हिस्सा सेव कर लिया जाता है फॉर फ्यूचर इन्वेस्टमेंट फॉर फ्यूचर कंजम्पशन फॉर फ्यूचर इन्वेस्टमेंट राइट सो द स्लोप ऑफ दिस कर्व इज द चेंज इन कंजम्पशन ड्यू टू चेंज इन इनकम सो व्हेनेवर लाइक इफ वी टॉक अबाउट दिस एंड दिस इज द चेंज इन इनकम this is change in consumption. So if you divide by this by this C over 1, so you can see that you get the marginal propensity to consume. So this is the Keynes consumption function. And that consumption function is derived from the properties uh, or the conjectures that we just discussed uh, in the first slide. Now, MPC always lies between 0 and 1. And and that average propensity to consume falls. How average propensity to consume fall? If income goes up, consumption will go, uh, consumption will also go up, but by less proportion. So, when C is the numerator, it will be less than that, but as compared to Y, the numerator will be less than that. Overall, the APC will fall. Kar this is known as the Keynes psychological law of consumption. Now, continue with the Keynes consumption function. As income rises, we said that APC falls, consumers save a bigger fraction of their income. Uh, as we know that uh, we have a Keynes consumption function, which is C is equal to C bar plus C y. Now, if we want to draw or calculate APC, we need to divide this equation by y on both sides. So we get uh, APC is equal to C over y is equal to C bar over y plus C. So this is the basically a average propensity to consume of Keynes consumption function. Now, we would like to explain how AP falls uh, with the rise in income. Uh, we'll see that on y-axis we are measuring consumption, on x-axis we are measuring income. 
as C is the consumption function line and if you see that these are the two lines which we just want to show you that how uh, this uh, with the increase in consumption APC fall now this tells us if at this point we have this level of consumption this level of income here if we further goes up consumption will go down now this tells us that it, it, these two lines tells us this is the average propensity to consume slope is equal to a uh, slope of these curve with average propensity to consume and this tells us that as income goes up consumption goes up but average propensity to consume will fall because uh, of the property of Keynes uh, consumption function as income goes up consumption will also go up but by less proportion now there is empirical research or empirical lot of empirical research in earlier time so they supported Keynes consumption function right so what were uh, the finding of those re that, that research and uh, they a um, lot of many economists conducted research and they supported Keynes uh, hypothesis Keynes consumption function they said that the findings of the research are household with higher income consume more MPC is positive, they save more, MPC is less than one, uh, save a large fraction of their income, of course, then APC falls as income rises. So very strong correlation between income and consumption. Income seem to be the main determinant of consumption, right? So those researches supported Keynes hypothesis Keynes properties and they said that uh, if household income rises increases consumers spend more MPC is positive save also they save more and then MPC is less than one uh, save a larger proportion of a uh, fraction of their income then APC falls as income rises so they found that those researches found that there is a very strong correlation that exists between income and consumption and they concluded that they said that income is the main determinant of consumption income is the main source of changes in consumption now what are the problems with Keynes consumption function? Kya masail hai? Kya issues hai? That need to be discussed jo ki controversial hai between Keynes and other economists. Based on Keynes consumption function, economists predicted that C would grow more slowly than Y over time. Based on Keynes consumption function, economists predicted that C would grow more slowly than Y over time. This prediction did not come true. As income grew, APC did not fall and C grew just as fast. Keynes ye kehta hai ke jab income mein azafa hota hai, consumption bhi bharti hai, lekin uh, increase in consumption is less than as compared to increase in income. But this production, the critics hai, the against hai, the problem hai, the controversial issue hai, is that this prediction did not come true as income rises and income grew the APC did not fall and C grew just as fast so Simon Kuznet is an economist who showed that C over Y is a constant or remains stable in the long run and he proved this relationship with the help of using a time series data so by using data for many years he said that he proved that with research that over the time as income goes up C also goes up and APC did not fall it remains stable in the long run right this is a problem in Keynes uh, consumption function which is highlighted pointed, pointed out by Keynes uh, Simon Kuznet and Simon Kuznet has done his research and he proved by using an empirical data time series data he proved that C over Y APC every propensity to consume remains stable remain constant over the time period this is known as uh, consumption puzzle uh, because Keynes is talking about Keynes said that uh, uh, APC falls and there is a fall in every propensity to consume as income rises but Simon Kuznet says that 
in the long run in the long time period uh, APC does not fall it remains stable right so uh, we have two lines here and uh, we have uh, the uh, Keynes consumption function uh, which is in blue line consumption function from cross-sectional data this line shows that as income rises APC falls right so there is a fall in APC how APC falls like suppose if we are here if we are somewhere here this is the consumption here this is the income right now suppose income goes up somewhere here consumption is here so the change in consumption is more due to change in income so we can say that APC APC falls as Y increases, right? So, but if we see the other line, which is red line, uh, which is given by Simon Kuznet, uh, which he developed by using the long time series data, so that tells us that the change in consumption is equal to the change in income over the time period when we use the time series data so income remains uh, APC remains constant over the time period so this is called a consumption puzzle uh, in Keynes model and that uh, as income goes up consumption will also go up but by the same proportion if we use time series data if we talk about the long term period so this is a confusion uh, the card consumption puzzle which states that according to Keynes uh, income when income goes up consumption will also go up but by less proportion so APC falls but as far as Simon Kuznet is concerned he said that as income goes up consumption go up by the same proportions in the long run and APC, APC remains stable over the long time period now we'll come to the second part of uh, the lecture which is about the Irving Fisher and intertemporal choice uh, he basically talked about that that consumer or individual has a choice to spend his income at present consumption uh, for present consumption or use it for the future so the he or she has a temporal choice uh, between the two time period consumptions right so the basis for much subsequent work on consumption function basically it now become who had research here so they basically considered this intern temporal choice they see how consumers our individuals basically spend their income uh, between present and future consumptions he assumes that Fisher assumes that consumer is forward-looking and chooses consumption for the present and for the future to maximize lifetime satisfaction so he is a very clever he is a looking a forward-looking consumer and he chooses that consumption uh, for the present and future which maximizes lifetime satisfaction right so he uh, distribute the income between present and future consumptions consumer choice are subject to an intertemporal budget constraint of course that choice depends on the budget constraint and that budget constraint is known as the intertemporal budget constraint a measure of total resources available for present and future consumption so which is basically the measure which tells us how much resources are available for the consumer for present and future consumptions the basic basis of two period models are so the basic assumptions are the basis are the basic factors of the two time period models are number one uh, we have period one which is called the present we have period two which we call the future notation that we are going to use to explain this two time period model given by Irving Fisher uh, y1 is the income period in period one y2 is the income in period two c1 is the consumption in period one c2 is the consumption in period two and as we know that saving is the difference between income and consumption 
S is equal to Y1 minus C1 is the savings in period 1. S is always less than 0 if the consumer borrows in period 1. So, if the consumer ki jo income hai consumption se less than period 1, then the saving hai, that would be negative, that would be less than 0. Because uh, the consumer uh, is net borrower or he is borrowing money or income to finance to meet his expenses to to for his consumption he borrow income from uh, money for consumption right so s will be negative if consumers borrows in period one so these are the notations that we are going to use to explain the two time period model of consumptions now dividing the intertemporal budget constraints so period two budget constraint is equal to how we can write the budget constraints uh, uh, of uh, uh, period 2, period 2 is equal to uh, consumption C2 is equal to Y2 plus 1 R plus RS. Now the consumption in period 2 depends on the level of income in period 2 which is Y2. 1 plus R is the rate of interest that he or she will earn on if he saves money in period one right so one plus rs is uh, one plus rs is the interest rate on savings which he has saved from period one income now if we just substitute the value of s here uh, y2 plus one plus r into y1 minus c1 now if we just simplify these equations what we get rearranging to put c terms on one side and y terms on other side. So, kya karenge? If you see that 1 plus r and y1 minus c1, so it has two components. So, one component is 1 plus r. First, we just simplify this equation. It can be further written as y2 plus uh, 1 plus r into y1 minus 1 plus r into c1 right now we rearrange karenge c1 uh, consumption ko ek side pe le jayenge income ko dusri side pe la jayenge so then this equation will become 1 plus r c1 plus c2 is equal to y2 plus 1 r plus r into y1 now if we divide this equation by 1 plus r on both sides so what we get we get the intertemporal budget constraint faced by the consumer and two time period and which is equal to c1 plus c2 over 1 plus r is equal to y1 plus y2 over 1 plus r now the left hand side is the present value of lifetime consumption and y1 plus y2 or 1 plus r is the present value of lifetime income right so when we have two time periods when we have more than two time periods so then we the budget constraint which the consumer is facing tells us the present value of uh, lifetime consumptions and on one side and then on the other side it tells us this budget constraint tell us the present value of income lifetime income it is important when we have more than one period so our need is that we have the future ki consumption and present value of the future and the future ki income is the present value of the and then we compare the two present value of, and then come up with the decision right so we compare the present value of lifetime consumption with the present value of lifetime income and then decide uh, so what kind of relationship is there between the two parameter between the two variable uh, which are the present value of consumption as well as present value of income so this is the intertemporal budget constraint that consumer has to face when we discuss the two time period consumption model given by Irving Fisher now intertemporal budget constraint to explain karte hain and uh, if you see this diagram uh, on the slide on y-axis we are measuring consumption 2 c2 consumption in time period 2 on x-axis we are measuring consumption in period 1 we have a budget constraint budget line 
straight line and then the consumption is equal to income both depends on on, on both periods if we take a point like say this point a somewhere here here uh, consumption is equal to income in both periods that so that's not a problem here uh, if we say that if the consumer is lies between above, above, above this point so what is happening here so is saving but if it comes below this uh, the consumer is borrowing in period one right so the budget constraint shows all the combinations of C1 and C2 till uh, which it just exhausts the consumer resources in both time periods, right? So consumption, the budget constraint is telling us that the amount of income, the amount of resources that exhausts between the two time period consumption, which is C1 and C2. Y1 plus Y2 over 1 plus R is the income in period one. 1 plus R Y1 plus Y2 is the level of income in period 2. The slope of budget constraint is that C1 plus C2 over 1 plus R is equal to Y1 plus Y2 over 1 plus R. So this is the budget constraint, this is the line. अगर आपने देखोगे if you if you remember जो आपने microeconomics का course पढ़ा है उसमें क्या पढ़ा है आपने कि हमारे पास एक budget constraint जो कि individual consumer face करता है and consumer has to spend uh, while remaining on the budget constraint and or uh, below the budget constraint he cannot go above the budget constraint if he go above the budget constraint he or she has to borrow of uh, resources from other uh, sources. Now the slope of budget constraint lines equal in this slide we are uh, objective of this slide is to tell you what is the slope of budget constraint. The slope of budget uh, constraint or the budget line equals my uh, is equal minus one plus r, right? So the interest rate, the negative interest, big ne why negative because it's coming down. If consumption in time period one goes up, consumption in time period two goes down. So negative uh, uh, sign and the rate of interest one plus r is the slope of budget line. Now in order to determine the optimal combination or optimal consumption in time period one and two we need to draw the consumer preferences we need to see what are the consumer preferences as we have seen in the microeconomics here macroeconomics may be according to Irving Fisher we need to determine what are the consumer preferences what he wants what he prefers so as you know that if we are interested to explain the consumer preferences we need to discuss the indifference curve an indifference curve is a curve that shows all combination of C1 and C2 that's make the consumer equally happy right so if we have if you see that on y-axis we are measuring consumption 2 on x-axis we are measuring C1 so I see indifference curve is the combination of all points uh, of C1 and C2 that gives equal satisfaction to the consumer or makes consumer equally happy right so any point on the curve suppose uh, if we take IC1 if consumer is at point A B or C he is indifferent uh, he is just substitute uh, whether he uh, he consumer is at point A B or C he is indifferent among all these consumption bundles because he is just when he is moving from A to B, B to C, he is just substitution, substituting consumption C2 for C1. He is uh, uh, consuming more in time period 1, uh, less in time period 2, but that gives him or her equal level of satisfaction. He remains equally happy at all these points whether he is at point A or B or C. So he remains equally happy by, by remaining on any combination but as he moves uh, as, as he moves from the lower indifference curve to the higher indifference curve he will get higher satisfaction he will get he will be more happy to be on higher indifference curve because the each point on higher indifference curve 
give more consumption or uh, or give uh, higher level of consumption uh, for both periods that c1 and c2 right so higher interference curves are preferred or represent high level of happiness uh, for the consumer right so what we can say that what we can conclude that if the consumer remains on the same indifference curve he will remain indifferent between any bundle of consumption but if he moves between the curves then he will be highly more happy uh, on the higher difference curve and less happy on the lower difference curve where he will be getting less of consumption in both time periods so consumer preferences are very very important if we want to determine the optimal level of satisfaction the optimal level of happiness of the consumer in the two time period we need to discuss the consumer preferences what are the consumer preferences how he prefers uh, between different consumption combinations of two time periods now after discussing this consumer preferences and consumer budget constraint which is the intent from roller budget constraint if we combine these two indifference curve and budget constraint in one diagram we can determine the optimal combination of c1 and c2 which gives the maximum or the optimal satisfaction optimal level of happiness uh, to the consumer and we'll do it in the next slide before the optimal i would like to discuss the uh, the the slope of indifference curve uh, if you remember the slope of indifference curve when we talked about uh, when you know when you've learned in microeconomics is the minor rate of substitution again here when we are considering the combination of two consumption uh, consumption in two time periods c1 and c2 the slope of ic is again the minor rate of substitution it is the substitution the slope is the substitution between the two consumptions uh, between the consumption in two time periods so minor rate of substitution the amount of c1 consumer would be willing to substitute for one unit of c1 so how much consumer substitute uh, how much consumer substitute of c2 to get more of c1 that is known as the slope of indifference curve and this is known as the minor rate of substitution and the slope of indifference curve at any point equals the minor rate of substitution at that point if you see that and uh, we are taking two points here on the indifference curve one this is the point and this is the point right at this point this is c1 c2 and c1 now if we move to this point at this point this is the consumption this is c2 this is c1 right so in order to get this much of c1 right increase in c1 he has to sacrifice this much of c2 so this change this change divided by this change is the minor rate of substitution or the slope of indifference curve so the substitution how much consumer substitute of c2 to get more of c1 is known as the slope of minor rate of slow slope of indifference curve which is called marginal rate of substitution and this minor rate of substitution decline as consumer continues to substitute one consumption to another cons consumption now we come to the optimizations what is the optimal point where mm, consumer is getting maximum consumption in time one maximum consumption in time two right so we here but for that purpose we need to combine the budget constraint and the consumer preferences which is in the in the form of indifference curve now uh, we explain the optimization with the help of diagram given you in front of in front of you uh, on the slide on as uh, as usual on y axis we are measuring consumption c in time period 2 c2 on x axis we are measuring uh, consumption in time period 1 uh, which is c1 and uh, we have a budget constraint with the blue line we have three in difference curve right so i c1 we can call this we can give name i1 i2 i i3 right so 
I2 is which is in red color is tangent to the intertemporal budget line at O, right? So this is the point where the uh, they give us the combination of C. This is C2, and here this is C1. The optimal C1, C2 is where the budget constraint is tangent to the indifference curve, or where the slope of indifference curve is tangent to the slope of budget constraint, right? So I2, which is indifference curve 2, is tangent at point A to the budget line, and this is the point where consumer get maximum consumption in time period 2 and maximum consumption in time period 1, and this is the point where consumer is maximum happy or uh, his, uh, his, uh, uh, his satisfaction is maximum. Now, suppose why we call this the optimal consumption? Suppose if consumer lies on the interface curve which is below, then this uh, curve from I suppose I1, right? Now I1, he, at this point, we have this much of C1, this much of C2, but since this curve is below than the budget constraint, so we can say that there is still capacity, our consumer has still resources, there are more resources available with the consumer, he can move uh, to the higher level, right? So since the curve is below than the budget constraint. So that's why we cannot say that this is the optimal combination of C1 and C2. And similarly, if we take any point on the higher indifference curve, Suppose this is point C, at this point, this is, this, these are the units of C2, these are the units of C1. Now, if we see at this point C, what is happening, uh, consumer is getting more of both consumptions, C1 and C2, but since this is beyond the budget constraint, it is beyond his limits. If he want to attain this combination of C1 and C2, he or she need to borrow money from other resources because this is above than the budget constraint, right? Right. So this is uh, why we cannot say that any point on I3 is the optimal point. So the optimal point uh, is the point where the slope of budget line is equal to the slope of indifference curve or in other words, the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line or the intertemporal line. That is known as the optimal point. At this point, at the optimal point, the slope uh, MRS is equal to 1 plus R. Now we'll see that whenever there is a change in income, how consumption responds to change in income in both time period. Now suppose in, an increase in income from Y1 to Y2, what will happen? There will be a parallel shift in the budget line, right? Jab income mein zafa hoga, to budget line mein parallel shift aa jayegi. So we see that how this affects the consumption, how this change in income affects the change in consumption. Uh, with the help of diagram in front of you, on Y axis we are measuring C2, on X axis we are measuring consumption C1. And uh, we have blue, blue line, budget line, original budget line, and original inference curve. Consumer is a, at equilibrium at point. At A, where he's getting maximum units of C1, maximum consumption in C1, maximum in C2. Now, if budget line uh, with increase in income, as we said that, if there is a change in level of income from Y1 to Y2, there will be a parallel shift in the budget line, right? So uh, we, uh, the consumer moves to a new equilibrium, suppose point B, where he is getting more of consumptions in both time period, uh, in uh, time period one and time period two. So what we can say that, so provided they are both normal, if both goods are normals, then we can say that with the increase in income, with the change in income, the consumption of both goods C1 and C2 will increase regardless of whether the income increase occur in period 1 or in period 2. 
So whether it goes up in period 1 or in 2, there will be change in consumption in both time periods, which is C1 and C2. But considered or provided is the condition is that the goods should be normal. Now, here we would like to compare the two economists, uh, the consumption function given by two economists, which are Keynes and Irving Fisher. Now, Keynes said that consumption, current consumption is the main determinant of income. That consumption depends on current income of the consumer, right? As income goes up, consumption goes up, but by less proportions. And he also said that that uh, MPC is less than 1, MPC is positive, APC falls is as income rises, and he said that the income or the current income is the main determinant of consumption as per Keynes model of consumption. But Fisher says that current consumption depends only on the present value of lifetime income. The income in time period 1 or the current consumption depends on the lifetime income of the consumers. Present value of the lifetime income. The time of, timing of income is irrelevant here because of the consumer can borrow or lend between the period. So it depends on the present value of the lifetime income. So current consumption does not depend only on current income, but it depends on the present value of lifetime income. So the timing of income is irrelevant here because consumer can borrow in period one or in period two. So we see that how C responds if there is changes in the rate of interest. We can explain this with the help of a diagram given in front of you on the slide. On y-axis we take C2, on x-axis we take C1. We have original budget line, uh, blue budget line, we have an original interest curve and consumer is at optimum at point A. Now suppose if the rate of interest increases, what will happen? The budget line rotates. Right? So then now consumer move to, uh, so we have a new budget line with red color and the consum uh, uh, consumer is at optimum point at point B where he is getting more consumption in time period 2, less consumption in time period 1. So as depicted in the diagram, we can see that C1 falls and C2 rises. However, it could turn out differently. It could be differently because it depends on uh, the type of good, type of consumption of the consumer because if it is normal good, then of course C1 falls, C2 rises. But if it is inferior or some other product, so then of course the result could be different. Now how C respond is to change in R? Uh, here we need to discuss uh, two important effects that can we come across. Uh, by changing in R and then uh, how a change in R respond to change in C. Income effect. If consumer is severe, the rise in R makes him better off, which tends to increase consumption in both time period. That is the income effect. If consumer is severe, the rise in R makes the, him better off. So, agar consumer jo hai, income ko save karna janta hai, he is an income saver, what will happen? Consumer is a saver. So then what will happen? A rise in R makes the consumer better off in both time periods, which tend to increase consumption in both time periods, C1 and C2. Now, there is a substitution effect also. The rise in R increases the opportunity cost of current consumptions. A rate of interest bartha hai, to uski jo opportunity cost hai, agar wo zyada khach karna chahe, present consumption zyada badhana chahe maujooda halat mein zyada kharch karna chahe aur rate of interest ke badhne se uski jo probability cost hai wo kya hogi badh jayegi agar we amount future ke liye wo save kare jahan pe usko zyada rate of interest mil raha hai to uski consumption zyada hogi right so with the increase in interest rate the probability cost of uh, current consumption is higher which tends to reduce c and increase in consumption period time period 2 so uh, there are two effects whenever there is change in the rate of interest uh, there are two effects one is the income effect the other is substitution effect now with increase in income if a consumer is saver so then of course it makes him better off in both time periods consumption in time period one will also go up consumption period in time two will also go up but 
<coughs> there is also a substitution effect. The rise in R raises and increases the opportunity cost of consumption in time period 1, C1, R. Right? So if the opportunity cost of consumption will go up, what which tends to reduce uh, in consumption 1, and consumer would like to save more for future consumption, and the consumption in time period 2, C2, will go up. So both effects, C2, whether C1 rises or falls, depends on the relative size of income and substitution effects. In, uh, so what we have seen that, what we observed that, C2 has increased in both cases, but uh, C1 rises or falls depends on whether uh, um, depends on the size of the income and substitution effects. How much is the size of income effect? How much is the change in income? How much is the change in substitution between the two time period, right? So it depends on the relative size of uh, uh, income and substitution effect and then that size tells us how much will be C1. Constraint on borrowing. In Fisher theory, the timing of income is very irrelevant. Fisher ye kehta ki timing are, is not important because the consumer can borrow and uh, lend across the periods. So, for example, if consumer learns that her future income will increase, so she can spread the extra consumption over both periods by borrowing in the correct period. If consumer ko pata hai ki uski jo future income hai wo bad jayegi, to what she can do that, she can spread so, when she knows that in future she will increase more money in the income, what will she do? She will extra consumption uh, over both periods by borrowing in the current period. So, if her income is less than current, she will also increase the consumption in the future. Because she knows that in future she will increase the income in the future. She can compensate the consumption with the current income. So, she can compensate the consumption with the current However, if consumer faces borrowing constraint, अगर कंज्यूमर कंस्ट्रेंट है बारो नहीं कर सकता लिक्विडिटी प्रेफरेंस कंस्ट्रेंट है सो देन शी मे नॉट बी एबल टू इंक्रीज करंट कंजम्पशंस एंड हर कंजम्पशन मे बिहेव्स एज केन्जियन थ्योरी इवन दो शी इज रैशनल एंड फॉरवर्ड लुकिंग कंज्यूमर तो देन हिज कंजम्पशन विल बी अकॉर्डिंग टू केन्जियन थ्योरी इवन दो ही इज फॉरवर्ड एंड रैशनल कंज्यूमर Constraint on borrowing. Uh, we explain this uh, constraint of borrowing with the help of diagram given in front of you. We have a consumption on, uh, in time period 2 on y-axis. On x-axis we in Mary C1. We have a budget constraint line with no borrowing constraint. So this is a line which is a straight line. Here there is no constraint on the consumer of borrowing, right? Now this is the cons budget constraint uh, which we have a constraint on consumer as a borrowing constraint. The budget line with the borrowing constraint is this one. Uh, now the borrowing constraint ta takes the form C1 is less than or equal to Y1. Now co where consumer will be at optimum if we have borrowing constraint budget line which is not binding. So we have two possible, uh, so one if consumer is on this portion of budget constraint like suppose consumer is suppose at point let's call if consumer is on this portion of budget constraint and is at equilibrium here the borrowing constraint is not binding of the consumer then optimal C1 is less than Y1. This C1 is less than Y1. But if consumer is on the, a consumer borrowing is constraint is binding, so then this is the portion of income and if he is at point E, he would like to prefer on point D, the optimal choice of the consumer is point D, but since the consumer can, cannot borrow, the best can do is at point E, right? So this is point is on the budget constraint, which is binding budget constraint. But the optimal choice for the consumer will be point D. Why optimal choice is D? Because this is the point on higher indifference curve, right? So if consumer is a point on higher indifference curve, he will be getting more consumption in time period 1, right? So but 
the choice with the consumer is only to be at point E. So uh, we have discussed two theories of uh, consumption functions, uh, two model of consumption function. Uh, that is the Keynes model of consumption function and the other model is the Erwin Fisher model. So this was all about today's class. I just revise uh, what we have learned in today's class mm, and summarize and then finish today's lecture. In the first part of the lecture, uh, we discussed Keynesian consumption function theory. Uh, we started Keynes consumption function with his uh, conjectures of Keynes model and we discussed three possible things. We said that Keynes conjectures are that MPC is lies between 0 and 1. That consumption marginal change the slope of consumption function uh, which is marginal propensity to consume is positive, right? Why MPC is positive? As inc income goes up, consumption will also go up but by less proportion. So we can say that uh, MPC is positive. Now as uh, uh, the M MPC is also less than 1 uh, because the increase in consumption is less than increase in income, consumer is uh, uh, income saver, uh, consumer save karta hai. Uh, if consumer is saver, of course, uh, APC, uh, MPC is less than 1. Now, APC falls as income rises. The second conjecture that we've discussed that uh, with the increase in income, consumption will also go up because, and APC falls because uh, consumer would like to save more for his future consumptions. Uh, current income, and the third conjecture was current income is the main determinant of current consumption as far as Keynes economist is concerned. So Keynes, the new consumption function, the uh, Keynes said that consumption is a function of income, but uh, the change in consumption is less due to change in income because uh, the consumer is a saver and he would like to save the income for future investment. So this Keynes consumption function is known as the Keynes psychological law of consumption. Empirical studies, empirical research has supported, has a lot of support uh, for Keynes uh, and they have done research and they proved that uh, with the help of household data and the short uh, time series data and they confirms the Keynes conjectures and they confirms all of the Keynes conjectures, Keynes consumption functions. In the long time series data but the puzzles which we have confronted is that in Keynes consumption function uh, uh, that in the long term uh, times long time series data APC does not fall it remains stable so professor Simon Kuznet uh, has done research by taking time series data and he said that uh, in the long time series data if we analyze that data uh, APC does not fall as income rises but it remains same in the long time period. So this is a puzzle in Keynes model you have discussed Keynes ye kata hai ki APC fall karta hai as income rises but uh, Simon Kuznet says that as income falls increases consumption also increases and APC remains stable if we use the long time series data. Second jo humne consumption function discuss kiya a consumption ki theory discuss ki that was the Fisher theory of intertemporal choice and uh, between the consumption in two time periods jahan pe humne do time periods ki baat ki aur yahan pe jab hum do time periods ki baat karte hain we talk about the present value of consumption and present value of lifetime income aur isme hame we have discussed the budget constraint which is known as the intertemporal budget constraint faced by the consumers in two time periods and and the consumer indifference curve where we have seen that consumer has an optimum uh, level of satisfaction optimum level of happiness at the point where the slope of budget line is, is tangent to the slope of indifference curve. Now Fisher theory of intertemporal temporal choice says that consumer chooses current and future consumption in to maximize 
lifetime satisfaction subject to an intertemporal budget constraint so he will try to choose those combination of c1 and c2 so that maximize lifetime satisfaction subject to the intertemporal budget constraint moreover he also said that current consumption depends on lifetime income not on current income so the income which is earned by the consumer in life in the whole life if the whole life is two time period then the income earned by consumer in two time period so current consumption depends on two time periods uh, depends on lifetime income not current income so provided consumer can borrow and save condition ye hai ki agar consumer borrow kar sakta hai consumer save kar sakta hai so Irving Fisher ye kehta hai jo consumption hai depend karti hai current consumption depend karti hai lifetime income so these are the two models uh, of consumption two theories of consumption function jo humne aaj discuss ki अगली क्लास में हम दो और मॉडल्स की बात करेंगे एंड विल फर्दर कंटिन्यू विद कंजम्पशन मॉडल यहाँ पे जो आज हमने बात की वी टॉक अबाउट केन्स कंजम्पशन फंक्शन विच इज नोन एज दिन साइकोलॉजिकल लाफ कंजम्पशन वी ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट द अर्विंग फिशर इंटरटेपोरल चॉइस वेयर ही सेट दैट कंजम्पशन इज डिवाइडेड बिटवीन द टू टाइम पीरियड एंड कंज्यूमर इज ऑप्टिम लेवल ऑप्टिम लेवल वेयर he gets maximum consumption in both time period which depends on the life type income of the consumer right so uh, when we were discussing keynes consumption function to we come up with the consumption puzzle wo puzzle kya thi ki keynes ye kehta hai ki income ke badhne ke sath apc fall karta hai साइमन कुजनर ने ये रिसर्च की कि टाइम सीरीज डाटा लिया लॉन्ग टर्म सीरीज डाटा लिया और उसने ये कहा कि एपीसी डज नॉट फॉल एज इनकम राइज ओवर द लॉन्ग टाइम पीरियड इट रिमेन सेम इट रिमेन स्टेबल उसके बाद हमने बात की अरविंद फिशर की उसने बात की इंटरटेम्पोरल चॉइस की इंटरटेम्पोरल बजट कंस्ट्रेंट की उसने ये कहा कि करंट कंजम्पन डज नॉट डिपेंड ओनली ऑन करंट इनकम बट इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द लाइफ टाइफ इनकम Uh, provided if the consumer can save if the consumer can borrow money in the two time periods uh, this is all about today's class i stop here my lecture today uh, take care good luck god bless you allah hafiz